Hello, it's Alex. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a run through of all the spring summer A-line skirts that were recommended to me by you. If you watched my Friday Sews video from a couple of weeks ago, I had just bought this pretty fab fabric and I really wanted to make an A-line long skirt for spring and summer and I was struggling to find a suitable pattern. Um, I asked if anybody had any ideas and <laughs> I was inundated. So thank you so much. There were so many suggestions and obviously I couldn't make all of them, but I thought it would be really nice to share with you all the ideas that you had. So I'm gonna go over to my computer and have a run through of everything that was recommended. And then I'll pop back at the end and talk about the one that I chose to make. This is the Pattern Emporium Free Spirit skirt, which has a number of different options. It does have a gathered waist, which is one thing I was trying to avoid, but it does say it has minimal bulk at the waistline, so it's definitely one to have a look at. It certainly has the length I was looking for. There's also an option to make it with a button band at the front and also a high-low hem. Obviously, you can make it whatever length you like, but it does come with three cutting lines, so that if you're on the taller side or on the shorter side, you've got an idea of where I'm at is going to fit on you. It also has a number of different waistband options and a few optional extras. Another option from Pattern Emporium is the Get Zipped A-Line skirt which comes in a number of different lengths. They give you lots of options Pattern Emporium with all their patterns. So there are a number of different hacks for this for front pockets and side pockets. I think there's even a mock wrap on this one. And next up is McCall's 5056. This pattern's actually out of print now, but it seems to be very easy to find it on both eBay and this one's on Etsy right now. And this is one a couple of people suggested. My problem on this occasion is that because it has go days, which is what's giving that lovely fullness, it does also mean that it's pretty fabric hungry and I don't have enough fabric for my skirt to be able to use this one, but it's a really nice pattern. And this is another wrap skirt, it's McCall's 9182, which is out of print, but pretty easily available and gives lots of different wrap skirt options. So it's another really nice one to look at. Quite a lot of people recommended the Deer and Doe Fumé Terre skirt, which I absolutely love. Beautiful panelled maxi skirt with lovely shape to it. It's high waisted, it has a proper waistband, and then there are two options. One is button down front and one is with a fly front, you know, and a zip and it has a little bit of elastication at the back. It's definitely one to add to the list. Next up is the Sew Over at Haxby skirt, and this is one that lots of people recommended, and one that I couldn't use because it has go days. The go days mean that it does use an awful lot more fabric, and this skirt also has a go day. This time it's part of a vintage reproduction suit, it has the most beautiful shaping, both on the skirt and on the jacket. It's an absolutely beautiful pattern. This next pattern is from Seamwork and it's the Desi. It's a bias cut skirt which gives that lovely floaty look. I was looking for a skirt that was very long and that can be very difficult with the bias because your pattern has to sit diagonally on the fabric and that can limit the length. What's great about this pattern is that seam across the middle allows you to overcome that. It also has an elasticated waist but it does seem fairly minimal in terms of elastication so not too bulky. Next up is New Look 6106. As you can see, it's really just a selection of A-line skirts. It's got the pockets at the front, a couple of different lengths, centre back seam, fairly basic and pretty much what I was looking for. And this is another New Look pattern that works really well and this is 6346, which comes either with the button through version or the plain front version, a couple of different lengths. I don't think I've got the fabric to make this long enough for me, but again, it's another really good one. I think you could use this lots and lots and lots. This is another wrap skirt, Simplicity 1069. It's a really good pattern, this, because you've got those fabulous wide leg trousers, which would be lovely in warmer weather, and the shorts and the wrap skirt. So it's a great pattern, this one. Another great option is Simplicity 8019, which is 1970s skirts, but it's a current pattern. A um, couple of different lengths there, including a button through. Um, no, it doesn't have go days, but it's got a really lovely floaty look. This is a great one for pretty much all year round. Simplicity 2058 was recommended quite a few times. It's one of these amazing fit 
patterns. It's got fabulous princess lines around the waist and hips, meaning that that area is really nice and flat and bulk free. And these amazing fit patterns come with different pattern pieces according to your body type. So I think it's something like slim, regular and curvy. So they're definitely worth looking out for. And this is Butterick B6249 and this is a bias cut skirt again but with a slightly different shape it's more full it also has the yoke detail around the waist and the hips which can either be ruched or flat then on to Butterick B4686 two different styles of skirt here one with a yoke and flaring out to an a-line and another that's pleated but it looks like the pleats are sewn down around the waist so that would have been a really good one for me I can't tell whether this is bias cut on the version with the yoke. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell you anywhere in the details. Um, and for me, that's relevant because I'd want to add some length to it. This is the walking skirt from Folkwear Patterns. They have some really interesting historical and international patterns. And this one is a gourd skirt. It's unusual in that it has small gathers at the back, just below the waist. I'd love to see some more versions of this made up. I'm intrigued by this pattern. Another wrap skirt that you recommended comes from the Sew Over It Summer ebook. This is the Alba skirt, which really does look lovely on this picture here of Lisa Comfort. This is the one she's got ruffles on, so there's a ruffle option and a straight option. It's a really lovely skirt, but obviously you do have to buy the whole ebook, which does come with five patterns, but then you've got to like those five other patterns as well. Next up from Stock X Patterns may not be the correct pronunciation, is the Carla skirt. I love this skirt. I think it's quite a new pattern. I have seen some made up and they look fabulous. This is a pattern that is woven and has this beautiful fullness with these pockets, but it has a stretch waistband and I really like that. This is definitely one that, that I would like to make at some point. Quite a few people mentioned the Style Art Canterbury skirt. It's similar to the Seamwork Desi in that it has a yoke with an asymmetric seam across the front of the skirt meaning that although it's cut on the bias you can get a lot more length out of it it is fuller than the desi and it has an asymmetric hem it also has a fixed waistband and darts and a side zip so they're similar but not the same this one's from Tilly and the Buttons it's another wrap skirt it's going to be nice and easy to sew because it's got no fastening it just ties up at the front and it's got quite a lot of fullness so it's quite a nice skirt and this is the Maria Denmark Yasmin yoke skirt which pretty much is as it says it is. I suspect it's got a front facing rather than a waistband with a small yoke at the top and front pockets it's a really good core pattern to have this one. The Sinclair Patterns Florence skirt looks great. It's a gourd skirt, so it's fitted at the waist and over the hips, flaring out towards the hem. And the pattern comes in three size ranges, regular, petite and tall. It wouldn't be too difficult to lengthen it if you'd like a long skirt like me. This is the Sewaholic Hollyburn skirt. This is another one with a really nice shape, so it's fitted at the waist and then flaring out. And not only does it come with three different lengths, it also comes with three different amounts of flare. So lots of choice with this one. And now I'm at Pattern Union and this is the Lisa Bias skirt. There's a couple of interesting things about this pattern so I'm really glad that this one came up. Firstly, it says that this can be used in pretty much any fabric including knits so that makes it very versatile. Also, because there are no side seams, you don't have that cling that you get with a bias cut skirt, which isn't always very forgiving. So this could be a much more flattering bias skirt really intrigued by this one. And then also with Pattern Union is the Phoebe Maxi skirt. This is part of a collection, the Phoebe collection, so it can be made on its own but you can also buy tops within that Phoebe collection that works with this. There's an A-line version and a tiered peasant skirt version, both with front pockets and an elasticated waist. And this is the Kellum skirt from MIY Collection. This is called the Ultimate A-Line Skirt and that is what I was looking for. Comes with either a waistband or a waist facing. There's a pocket version and even an option to add a centre pleat. So it looks great. Unfortunately, it looks like they only sell paper patterns and it's not in stock at the moment, but one to keep your eye on. Another pattern that was suggested comes from Merchant and Mills and it's actually in one of their books which is called The Workbook and I do actually have this book. It's a really nice full A-line skirt with a drawstring, possibly comes with an elasticated waist as well. Of course the thing is you've got to buy the whole book which is £25 but as you can see there are 10 patterns included in that book. 
And last but not least is the estuary skirt from So Liberated. What's nice about this is that the waistband at the back is elastic, which I do think is a perfect combination to have a flat fronted waistband and elastic at the back. So there's lots of choice there and lots of patterns that, uh, yeah, thanks for the enabling, because there are now lots of patterns that I want to make that I didn't know about. So I really, really appreciate everybody's suggestions. Um, there were a few that I didn't include, uh, a couple of people suggested making a quarter circle skirt which is a really good idea and somebody recommended a good blog post on how to do that so I will include that in the description box below. There were a few vintage patterns that were hard to find so I didn't include those and a couple of times where people recommended a company but not a specific pattern and I couldn't find anything that fitted the bill. But overall, I think they're all there and if I've missed one out that you recommended, I'm really sorry. There were just so many. Um, let me tell you which one I decided to go for. I was very restricted by the fact that I had bought two metres of fabric, so let that be a lesson to us all. <laughs> Don't just buy the fabric on spec, it is better if you know what you're going to make. On the other hand, fabric exp is expensive, isn't it? So, um, you know, sometimes you've just got to quite literally, oh God, I'm going to make a pun cut your cloth. Uh, the pattern I chose to use in the end came as a suggestion from uh, the lovely Maraid who is Vinka56 on Instagram and she is the lady whose amazing knitted socks inspired me to start sock knitting and she even sent me some absolutely beautiful wool ones. So big thanks to Maraid, go follow her over on Instagram. Um, she suggested this pattern which is the Arundel skirt from the Sussex Seamstress. So unfortunately, um, there isn't a line drawing to show you. There's just a couple of photographs, which is a little bit harder to get some of the detail, but basically it's a fairly standard A-line skirt with front pockets here. Um, that's about it. And that is around about what I wanted. There were others in that run through, um, but I thought it was quite nice to try somebody new um, she's got a small range of patterns. She's obviously very experienced as a seamstress and as a costume designer, so you could go and check her out. Uh, but yeah, I just thought rather than using one of the others, why not give it a try? And I didn't think I could go too wrong with an A-line skirt. The other thing that I also could tell was that I would be able to get the skirt I wanted out of my two meters of fabric, because this had a fabric requirement of 1.8 and I did add five centimetres to the length because I wanted mine to be quite long. Um, and yeah, it worked really well from that point of view. The pattern itself and the pattern instructions were fine, were pretty good. Didn't come with some of the bells and whistles that we're sort of beginning to expect in the sewing world now. Um, I really could have done with some finished garment measurements because I made a size 16, which had a waist measurement which was a couple of centimetres smaller than mine, and but the next size up was quite a bit bigger, so it was a bit hard to tell what I should do, so I could have done with some finished garment measurements. In the end I just added five centimetres to these two seams, you know, either side, uh, to give me that extra two centimetres, and to be honest, it's fitting fine. Um, but yeah, that sort of thing, there wasn't a lay plan, although lots of us don't always use a lay plan anyway, do we? And the other little niggle was that the instructions were only in centimetres, which suits me fine, because <laughs> I tend to use centimetres, but I know lots of people still so using inches, and I know I find it a pain when I've got a pattern that's only in inches. So it is nice if we can have both options. All niggles aside, I am thrilled with it. I have got the exact dress that I wanted. It's got just the right amount of sort of drape and floatiness. It's nice and fitted around the waist and no bulk at all around the, you know, the hips. And uh, I like the way the pockets are at the front. They are stitched down to here which is great for me because sometimes I find front pockets can get pushed out a little bit with my tummy. So it's nice to stitch those down. Came together really well. And the viscose fabric, which came from Lamarzi, it's a Dashwood Studios fabric, and it, it does come in some other colorways as well, which I know some of you have bought, um, which I'm really dying to see. But the viscose behaved itself in as much as viscose always does, because it can be a bit slippery to use. 
um, but it was good as gold. I mean, it's always going to need a good iron. And I noticed when I was wearing this the other day that, you know, I got creases over my lap when I was sitting down for, you know, at my computer for a bit. So it's just the nature of the beast, isn't it? But, you know, it worked really well. The pattern itself <laughs> doesn't even mention viscose. I think it's designed more for sturdy wovens, you know, denim and uh, things like moleskin and that sort of thing. Uh, but, you know, I just added a little bit of interfacing to things like the pocket edges and the, when I put the concealed zip in at the back, it's always fine, you know, no problems there. I did, um, it does have a, waistband which I'll be honest I, did, I didn't quite get that bit right I'm afraid to say I didn't really read the instructions I just merrily put the concealed zip in which by the way it suggests constructing the centre back seam first and then putting the concealed zip in and I was always taught to do it the other way around so I did it the other way around uh, but yes yeah, so I was merrily kind of ignoring things and putting the waistband on and it was only once I got halfway through and looked at the instructions I realised that it is designed for the zip to go all the way up to the waistband, to the top of the waistband and the waistband to fold over. So I ended up not doing that, not by design. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's fine and I don't suppose it really matters. I'm quite happy with it. So yeah, thank you very much everybody for all your suggestions. I probably would never, well not probably, I definitely would never have found this pattern had Mairead not come up with the, the suggestion and there were so many other brilliant, brilliant ideas in there. And um, yeah, there's definitely some, as I say, that I want to make. So thank you very much everybody. Quite happy with how these colours work, which was a bit of a thing I was wondering about. So I will be back really soon. Thank you so much for all your ideas. And if you haven't subscribed, it would be great if you would, because that's how you'll find out when there's another video. They're not doing the bell thing anymore. Face, uh, not Facebook, YouTube. Um, so yeah, if you subscribe, that means you won't miss out. I will be back on Friday for Friday Sews, and then I've got something lined up for next week as well. Go check out the Sussex Seamstress, I'm sure as a another one woman business she will be appreciative of that i don't know her from adam <laughs> and um yeah please look after yourselves and run on spring so lots of choice there one day there won't be a train